Hello, here's a P5JS program that makes a rocket fly into the sky after a countdown. Three, two, one, blast off. Let's look at how this works. Here's the HTML file. It uses Bootstrap and P5JS and P5 Sound. And it includes sketch.js. And here's a div with the class of container. And then in here, a div with an ID of main, and that's where the canvas will go. Here's the sketch. And I've divided the code into modules. And I believe when you use modules, you've got to use P5JS with this form where you don't just create the setup and draw functions directly inside the file. Rather, you include them in um, a structure like this. So let's go through the code. There is a rocket class that draws and moves the rocket and a sound maker class that handles the sounds, the speech and the sine wave sound. And this is how many seconds to count down. You remember it said three, two, one, blast off. And here's the P5 setup function. It creates the canvas with this width and the height of the browser window in 3D and then puts it in that uh, div that I mentioned. Sets the frame rate initially to one because the countdown occurs with um, one new number per second. So three, two, one, zero. Then we change the frame rate to faster later. Here's the draw function. And it's nicely uh, organized with some nested functions. So there's this nested function here, draw background. Let me just collapse it. So here's draw background, which we call, and then we draw the rocket. Then we do other stuff. Uh, I guess let's look at that now. Um, countdown seconds uh, starts at three, as you saw, and we decrement it each time uh, we come through the draw function. And as long as it's greater than zero, we say the countdown seconds. Otherwise, if it's uh, zero, then we say blast off. And then with a little bit of a delay, we set the frame rate to 60. So we we'll speed things up because the animation requires a uh, higher frame rate. Um, otherwise, so most of the time we're coming through this code, we calculate the maximum rocket Y and we want the program to stop when the rocket gets um, off the top of this green and up again by half. And then we call uh, adjust for rocket height in the sound maker so that it can raise the pitch of the sound. You remember the sine wave started at kind of a lower frequency and then raised as the rocket rose. And then we move the rocket. And then if the rocket gets to the maximum, exceeds the maximum, then we silence the sounds and then we do this no loop, which stops the draw function from being called. And we decrement countdown seconds. So uh, what do we look at next? Uh, I guess we'll look at draw the background, draw background. So I've just expanded it. And we um, you know, remember perhaps in 3D mode of P5JS, the origin is at the center. But for drawing the background, it's convenient to have, for me to calculate the left and the top. And um, the sky proportion is 75% and the ground is 25%. And so then we can calculate the sky height based on the height of the canvas. Um, so what happens here? Let me just collapse these so we can have another look at it in a different way. We call the P5JS background to clear the background. Then we call our draw sky and then we call our draw ground. So let's look at draw sky. And this uses 
push and pop so that we can save and restore certain settings so that they don't affect other things we're drawing. And we don't want to stroke the rectangle that we draw, the rectangles that we draw. We're using the hue, saturation, brightness, color mode because we're making a gradient. Maybe there's another way to make a gradient, I don't know. Or maybe it would be better to just load a graphic that's got a gradient. But here we're making a gradient by drawing many rectangles. Um, so a maximum of 100 rectangles because in the loop we're um, setting the fill color to be the um, hue. So here's the hue, that's a blue. Saturation is fully saturated, and then it's this brightness that we're calculating off of where we are in the number of gradient segments. Uh, then we draw the rectangle. Okay, that's how we draw the sky. Let's look at how we draw the ground. This is made with an ellipse. That's to, I wanted to show either curvature of the earth or maybe just some um, terrain and this is kind of plain so there's room for improvement there. The ground is an ellipse. Um, so that concludes the draw background and I think it's time now to look at the rocket class and the sound maker class. So let's look at the rocket class next. Here it is. Uh, what state does the rocket have? It has its Y position and its change in Y position each frame. It's kind of, roughly speaking, its speed. And here in draw, um, what do we do? We, here's the cylinder for the body of the rocket. And here's a cone for the nose of the rocket. And here's a cone for the, I guess, an engine at the bottom of the rocket. I'll let you look at them again. Three, two, one, blast off. So there's the cylinder and then a cone and another cone. Uh, what's this other stuff then? Well, the translates are for positioning. See, they, they all have, um, I see I didn't put a Z value in here, but that's all right. So they all have X and Z of zero. We're not changing anything left and right and to and fro, for and back, just the Y. So this is for positioning the, the body and the other translates are for positioning the cone parts. Ambient material 255 and directional light. The ambient material says that the the body of the rocket is white. And then the directional light is a white light coming from um, behind, well, between, between the viewer and the rocket, and then um, on the left. And uh, we don't want to stroke the triangles that make up the cylinder. Then for the cone, that's a different color. That's, that's a little bit reddish. And we have to rotate the cone, otherwise uh, it's not facing the right way. The cones, we're rotating it by um, pi, which is half of a, half of a circle. Um, okay, finally, we set um, a, something on the grayscale near black for the engine or whatever we want to call that bottom cone. And then we have a move method that just adds the speed, if you like, or the change in Y to Y. And then it increases the change in Y by the small amount here. I, I didn't go to the trouble of uh, using real um, rocket propulsion physics and things like that. It just made a simple way to have it accelerate. Okay, that's the rocket. The rest is the sound maker. And there are two parts of the sound. There's the speech. So these lines three and four here set up the speech. 
There's the speech synthesis object and then the utterance object. And then um, these lines five through nine set up, they create an oscillator and set the initial frequency and select the sine wave uh, type, um, which is kind of a smooth, pure, pleasing sound. And then initially the amplitude or the volume is zero. And then we start that oscillator. Then adjust for rocket height sets the amplitude based on how high the rocket is because as it gets higher and higher, we lower the amplitude. Um, and then we set the frequency to be a function of the, um, the height. So it's just the height, the height in pixels plus 30 um, gives us the frequency in hertz. Silence just turns off the oscillator. Now say is for the speech synthesis object and it sets the text of the utterance to whatever the message is and then it speaks the utterance. Okay, let's go back and see if we've covered everything here. So just to look through again here, um, here's a say, here's a say, Here's the adjust for rocket height in the sound maker. Here's a rocket move. And um, I'll run it one more time. I don't think I'm recording the sound, but you can see it again anyway. Three, two, one, blast off. You can run it here at this URL, davebsoft.com software speaking hyphen countdown and you can find the source code on my github repository uh, dc brichetti in web games under p5 speaking countdown see you next time